what things should you avoid if you have degenerative disc disease? The name degenerative disc disease sounds really scary. It sounds like you're one step away from Beth's doorstep. And so if you're diagnosed with it, you may be worried about what to avoid to avoid making the problem worse. I'm Dr. Dave Candy, and in this video, I'm gonna tell you about what things you can do to not only avoid making degenerative disc disease worse, but how you can actually help improve the symptoms so you can stay active without having to worry about if you're causing further damage. Now, if you find this video helpful, give it a like and subscribe to our channel so you can get notified of our future videos. Now, what is degenerative disc disease? Again, the name sounds really scary, but all it means is that you're losing height between the vertebrae, that the discs that normally cause space between the vertebrae, they're drying out those discs are mostly made of water and as you age the discs normally lose some water content that's why people will shrink you know, an inch or two usually as they age because you lose a little bit of height at each of your vertebrae levels and over time you'll get just a little bit smaller now that's usually not a big issue but if you've had a prior injury at a vertebrae perhaps you've herniated a disc in the past or perhaps you just repetitively move at the same area in your neck or the same area in your back over and over for years and years and years on end, that vertebrae can degenerate or dry up a little bit more than the vertebrae around it. And so you'll lose a little bit more height. Now, what are the net results of losing some height at a vertebral level? Well, it means that the spaces where the nerve come out in the vertebrae, um, those spaces get smaller. And so it can put some pressure on nerves it can also cause the facet joints between the vertebrae to come closer together, and so it presses the facet joints closer together. Now, degenerative disc disease can occur anywhere in your spine, in your neck or cervical spine, in your thoracic spine, or in your lower back or lumbar spine. But where you most commonly see it is in the neck or in the lower back. Now, the symptoms that it'll cause in the neck is either local neck pain, which is usually caused to the facet joints pushing on one another, or pain in the arm, where you lose space where the nerves come out and the pain will press on a nerve. It'll go into your arm or depending on what level, even down into your forearm or into your hand. Now in the lower back, the problems are commonly either localized back pain, if it's just pressing the joints together, or if you start to get some stenosis where the spaces where the nerves come out become a little bit more narrow. You can also start to get pain that goes down your leg. Now in the lower back, when you get degenerative disc disease, those problems are usually brought on more with positions where you're upright and standing. For example, standing in the kitchen for too long or standing in line at the grocery store or walking too long. That people with degenerative disc disease normally have more problems when they're upright with their back in an extended position and less problems when they're sitting down, where their back's relatively more rounded. And so what should you avoid if you have degenerative disc disease in the lower back? Well, if this is the problem that makes it worse, having the spine extended, where the spaces where the nerves come out, the vertebral foramen or intervertebral foramen get closer together and put pressure on the nerves and the facet joints jam together, if that's what causes it, then the simple solution is just creating just a little more bend or flexion in your spine, where you're opening up the spaces between the vertebrae, you're opening up the spaces where the nerves come out, and you're taking pressure on the area. That's oftentimes why it feels better to lean over something, like leaning on a grocery cart when you're in a store, or you'll see older people walking kind of bent over. The reason they do that is because it feels better to do. And a lot of people don't want to walk bent over because they feel like uh, it feels like I'm getting older. Well, bending over a little bit is actually a good idea if you have degenerative disc disease because it allows you to open up the spaces in your spine. Now, if your hip flexors are really tight, you may have to bend over a little bit more. So another thing to avoid is letting your hip flexors get really tight. Now, what oftentimes causes the hip flexors to get really tight? That's caused by sitting too much, where the hips are flexed or bent, and the hip flexors are in a shortened position for long periods of time. Now, that's how a lot of Americans spend their days these days, is sitting down 
in the office, driving, watching TV, eating. We spend a lot of time sitting down. And so another thing to avoid if you have degenerative disc disease is sitting too much. Now, if it's gotten to a stage where you have trouble standing and walking, you do need to sit down some to open up the spaces in your spine to give yourself some rest. But you want to avoid sitting way too much because that just further tightens the hip flexors. Things to do is to stretch the hip flexors, which you can do that in a variety of ways where you have one leg further backwards and one leg forwards. And I've got a video with four different ways that you can stretch your hip flexors, which I'll link to. But the things to avoid if you are, uh, if you have degenerative disc disease in your lower back is standing with too much arch in your back, standing for too long of periods of time without sitting down, and also sitting for too long of periods of time without getting up so your hip flexors don't get too stiff. Now, what can you do to help if you have degenerative disc disease in your back? Again, you know, avoid sitting too long so your hip flexors don't get too stiff. But if you need to open up the spaces in your back, leaning forward or stretching, bending forwards like that, where you're kind of rounding out the lower back, is a really, really good way to get quick relief from degenerative disc disease. That if you're having immediate pain, that's probably one of the best things to do is to get your spine in a more rounded out position. Now, what about if you have degenerative disc disease in your neck? Well, the same sort of patterns cause pain in your neck or even down into the arm. Common symptoms when you have degenerative disc disease in your neck is trouble turning to a side too much or looking upwards. That jams the joints closer together on one side when you look to that side or on both sides when you look upwards. So avoiding looking upwards as much as you can is helpful. Also avoiding setting computer monitors up like that or avoiding looking way too far up in the air, like looking you know, at fireworks, things like that can be uncomfortable. If you're able to recline a little bit, sit in a chair that'll go back so you can look upwards. If you absolutely have to look upwards, um, can be helpful. Now, most of the time you pinch nerves in what's called the mid cervical spine in through this area. And a lot of times that happens because down at the lower cervical spine, you can't move. The area where people get like that hunchback, a lot of times people don't move very well there. So avoiding positions where you develop that hump can be helpful. You usually develop that hump with a forward head position. So one thing you should avoid if you have degenerative disc disease in your neck is sitting with a forward head position like that, where you've got a lot of forward rounding at the base of your neck and a lot of arch in the middle and upper part of your neck. So sitting shoulders upright, head over shoulder and chin down can be helpful if you have degenerative disc disease in your neck. Now, what else should you avoid if you have degenerative disc disease in your neck? Sleeping with a pillow too far on one side narrows the spaces between the joints and the areas where the nerves come out on the side of the neck that you're bending towards. So having too low of a pillow if you're sleeping on your side can cause issues on the side you're sleeping on. Conversely, if you have too high of a pillow that's pushing you up the other way, it can cause problems on the opposite side. So if you have degenerative disc disease in your neck, you should avoid having your head in a position too far one way or position too far the other way when you're sleeping. The best pillow to have for degenerative disc disease is one that fills the space between your neck and the side of the shoulder so that your head doesn't get kinked too far to one side and also doesn't get pushed too far to the other side. Now, what if you sleep on your back and you have degenerative disc disease? Should you use one of those pillows that's built to give you neck support? Well, a lot of times those pillows are built for people that are younger and have less arch or a flat neck or have lost curve in their neck. And so they're designed with kind of a wave pattern like that to help build arch into your neck but you really don't want that if you already have too much arch in your neck. You don't want something pushing you into further arch when you're laying down. 
So sleeping with just a regular pillow, but one that's high enough that it pushes you up, or sleeping with two pillows so that it pushes your head up like that a little bit, and actually helps flatten out and stretch that area in the middle part of your neck or mid cervical spine. That can be a helpful position to sleep in if you are a back sleeper and you have degenerative disc disease in your neck. Likewise, I mentioned avoid looking upwards or you're jamming the joints together like that. But a good thing to do is do the opposite, pulling your head down where you're stretching the muscles here. And again, you don't want to pull where you're bending from the base of the neck because that's the problem that you know, a lot of people with degenerative disc disease have to start out with in the first place. So you want to allow the neck muscles to round out. If you kind of push on your head and create a little bit of compression like that, it'll help open up and flatten out this part of your spine, which is what you want if you have degenerative disc disease in your neck. Now another common people ask is, what about the dietary aspects? What foods should I avoid if I have degenerative disc disease? And these are gonna be the same whether it's your neck or your lower back or even your mid back. And the main thing you wanna avoid is foods that have a lot of empty calories, poor nutrients, or that are inflammatory on your gut. You should avoid eating what they call crap foods, which that's an acronym for carbonated beverages, refined sugars or refined flours, artificial colors, or processed foods. Now, you should also avoid foods that are high in saturated fat because that can be highly inflammatory in your gut and get your nervous system a little bit more sensitive. So what should you eat instead? Well, you should eat more real foods or what they call glow foods. And those are foods that are green leafy vegetables, lean proteins, omega-3 fatty acids, and water. Again, your discs are made highly of water, and so staying hydrated is really, really important if you have degenerative disc disease. So I hope you found this video helpful to not only learn the things that you should avoid if you have degenerative disc disease, but also the things that can be helpful to help you improve the symptoms that you're having and be able to do more without the pain of degenerative disc disease. Now, if you need further help for degenerative disc disease, that's something that we see a lot of at our office at More for Life. Just pick up your phone and give us a call at 314-941-3970 or visit us online and we'd be happy to help you out. And if you're watching this on YouTube and you're outside of St. Louis, give us a like and subscribe to our channel so you can get notified of our future videos. Thanks for listening and have a great day.